We are demonstrating the uh, new Horner APG product SmartMon pump. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is go through the screens uh, that comes on the unit. Uh, our first screen is a startup screen. This screen has some basic information about the unit such as the firmware version, the program version. We also have a current time and date at the bottom. We can uh, touch on these and edit that from right here on the startup screen. We have a diagnostic button here that tells us the uh, condition of our self-test, the power-up self-test, whether we passed or failed. Also on the startup screen we have a COM status button. This is divided up into two sections. The first section is just basic Ethernet status. Uh, we can look at this and tell if we have an Ethernet link or if we're uh, transmitting and receiving data. Uh, we also have a ping functionality here. If we're trying to connect to one of the drives and we're not sure if it's talking or not, we can punch in the drive's IP address here, ping it, and know for sure whether we're seeing it on the network. Finally, on the Ethernet, we have the, uh, the local IP parameters for this unit, the IP address, the uh, gateway, and the subnet mask, as well as the MAC ID of this unit. Also on the status, we have VFD COM status. Uh, this window shows us the uh, condition of the uh, network going to the VFDs. Uh, if there's any kind of a problem in communications, this, st this status screen will give us an indication of what's happening. Each individual drive has a status code. Uh, right now they're all zeros because it's all talking fine. If there was a problem, we would see an error code here. We can touch on this button and we have a list of definitions for different error codes that could show up there. This is our main screen. Uh, you can see that there's graphics for three different pumps on here. This tells us the basic information about the pump, if it's operating or not, and at what frequency it's operating. In the top left hand corner we have uh, the pressure of the system. I, I'm simulating this pressure right now so if we can see that pressure go up and down as I, as I uh, control this other unit here and you can see that I put the pressure down far enough that one of the drives actually kicked on. Uh, the next screen is the working information. This screen gives us uh, real-time data on current and uh, speed and voltage levels and so forth of the three drives as they're running. The next screen is our, I want to jump over here to uh, our meters. We have our meters for the, the VFDs themselves, as well as our meters for the uh, motor slash pump systems. We also have an alarm screen. Um, any alarm that happens in the system, we can see it show up on this screen, uh, such as a comm loss or a, a pressure alarm, if we have a low pressure alarm or a high pressure alarm. To set those things up, we simply touch on that button. We can give it a high pressure alarm setting, a low pressure alarm setting, and a delay for when those alarms are activated. Uh, now coming back to the parameter configuration. Uh, the parameter config is password protected. I've already entered the password so it, it came right to the screen. Uh, when we when we touch on that parameter button, we have three options. We can edit the password, uh, which right now 111 is the password. That's a user editable password. Uh, the other things that we have that are, that are more crucial to the operation is our parameter config and the PID config. The parameter config tells us uh, our operating parameters as far as how it behaves at what pressure set points. So the first item is the actual set point. Right now it's set to 70 PSI, so our pump system is going to try to maintain 70 PSI. We have a low pressure setting, and this is our setting that triggers a pump to come on. 
and then we also have a max pressure setting and this is a safety feature which if our pressure reaches this max limit which right now it's set to 90 if it reaches that max limit it turns all three of the pumps off and then finally on this side we have next pump on delay the pumps will come on one at a time uh, they'll run at 66 well they'll, they'll run to maintain the system but if a particular pump runs at its maximum frequency for a certain amount of time then it calls for another additional pump to come on and this is that setting for the delay so if pump one comes on it pump one keeps ramping up the pressure keeps going down it comes up to its maximum frequency and it stays at that maximum frequency for five seconds then it calls for an additional pump to come on now over on the right side we have the uh, minimum frequency and the minimum frequency timeout uh, the minimum frequency is is just that we don't want the drives to run lower than what we have set here right now I have the minimum frequency set at 30 Hertz so if a drive runs at 30 Hertz for five seconds which is what I have set here then it shuts off the uh, the unit also comes with a, uh, a manual operation. And, uh, this is a similar screen from the main screen we had a while ago, but this is the manual screen. We can punch in a frequency that we want it to run at and hit a start and stop button for each individual motor. Uh, they don't kick on and off by themselves. It's completely uh, user controlled from this panel.